In this video, I'm going to go over the basics of using printf in C. So printf is the standard function for outputting content to the terminal, or what we might call standard output in C. So I'm going to say here printf, and I'm going to say hello world, because that's kind of like the most common thing to print. And printf is the function, and this here is a string that we're giving as an argument to the function. And a string is like a series of characters. And so what we're going to do is we're going to print out the text hello world to the terminal here. So we'll compile this and we'll run it and we'll see what happens. So I get hello world here. And now this might be surprising, especially if you're coming from other languages, but we output hello world and that's okay. But now the next line in our terminal actually just kind of continues on where hello world left off. It doesn't begin on a new line. And that might be a little surprising if you're coming from say Python, because the print function of Python will automatically insert a new line at the end of your output. We don't get that in C. In, in C, like a lot of things in C, we kind of have to do it ourselves. So if I want to insert a new line, I could say backslash n. And backslash n is like a special character that represents a new line. So if I were to compile this again and then run it again, I now see that hello world is outputting and we get a new line output on the end of it there. And so now my terminal is going to begin on a new line. And so this backslash n is one special character. There are others. So if I say here print f and I'll say like another line of text, exclamation mark, I can print out more stuff. So I can just call print f as many times as I want. And we get like another line of text here. And again, we've got that new line there to ensure the terminal begins on a new line. There are other special characters. So one of them is backslash t. So backslash t represents a tab. So backslash T is like an indent basically. So if I run this here after compiling it, we're going to see, we get that, that tab, that indent there. And that's another special character. There are a couple other special characters we should talk about. One is, you know, if our, if our strings begin with a double quote and end with a double quote like this, then how do we actually output a double quote? That's another thing we use backslash for. That's another thing we're going to use backslash to help us with. So we're going to say here, print F. And I'm going to say here, double quote, colon, and I'm going to say slash double quote or backslash double quote. So backslash double quote, this is going to give us a, a double quote as, as output there. And so this is another sort of thing we can do with, with backslash. So I run this here and now I get that double quote as output and I can do that as well. If I didn't have that, it's not going to like that. So if I just had like print F and I said slash quote here, the compiler is not going to like that. So just slash double quote here, compiler does not like that because the compiler thinks like we're trying to output a, a quote. Um, even if I try to have, well, we can actually try to compile it just to see the errors. Let's do a clear. Let's just try to compile it. The compiler is actually going to throw errors and say like, Hey, you can't do that. Um, or it's going to make a liar of me because I didn't save the file. Okay. I just saved the file now. Okay, so now you can see, I didn't save the file before. Now, now when I saved it and tried to compile it, you can see the errors there, right? And it's saying like error, expected expression. It's, it's, it's saying I can't make sense of this basically. Um, so, so we can't do that. If I tried to put a space in between things, you'll find that we actually can't just output a backslash either. If we, if we do this, the, the compiler won't give an error, but we will get a warning. So if I try that and try to compile it again, we get a warning. It says unknown escape sequence. So this is, this is, often called the escape character as well. And what it's saying is like, I don't know what you mean by escape and then like a space here. So we can't do that either. If I did want to output a backslash, I'd have to say backslash backslash, and then that'll output a single backslash character. So you actually use backslash to output backslash. It's another thing it does. Um, so we run this here and now we've got our backslash character output there and we're happy. So that's a couple things printf can do. So another thing printf can do is we can use it to output, say, values. Like we can output integers and floats and strings and characters. So I can say printf and I could say here percent %d slash n. And I'm going to say here int colon percent %d slash n. So it's going to say like int colon something and then this new line is going to happen. So percent %d is what's called a placeholder. And a placeholder is basically telling printf that expect another argument that is going to tell you what to put here. 
in terms of some kind of actual value. And so it's a placeholder that we're going to fill in later with additional arguments to printf. And percent %d is a type of placeholder for integers. And it's telling C, we're going to give you an integer to output here. So if I say int and I'll say percent %d, and I'll give an integer here, I'll say like 4. What's, what's going to happen is printf is going to be called, and now it's got two arguments. It's got the string, but this string has a placeholder in it. And for every placeholder that we've got, we're going to have an additional argument that's going to be sent to printf. And we're actually filling in the placeholders with these arguments, and we're telling it like what to put where the placeholder is. So here, let's run this. We'll say GCC, compile it again, and run it. I get int 4 here, and we're outputting 4. So the placeholder that I give can be a value like this. It could also be like a literal value like this, like four or character A or whatever it is that we're outputting, but it could also be a variable. So it just has to be some expression that's gonna evaluate to some value. So I could say like int x is equal to five, and then I could say here x, and now I'm gonna say x here instead of four. So x is an expression. It's a simple expression. It's just a variable. It's going to evaluate to 5, and we're going to output 5 then. So we can run this here, and we're going to get x is 5 now. Now, one thing I might want to do is maybe I'm kind of getting tired of seeing all this output that I'm not really even that concerned about anymore. So one thing I might want to do is comment that out and say slash, 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 slash. And I've kind of commented out those lines so I can just focus on what I want to focus on here. So another thing I can do with printf is I can have multiple placeholders. I don't have to just have one. I can have multiple placeholders. So I could say here like printf, and I could say here percent %d, and I'll say comma, percent %d, comma, percent %d, and then a new line. And I'm going to output here x, x plus 1, and x plus 2. So here I'm going to output three things. So I've got three placeholders. So therefore, I need to provide three additional arguments for the printf, you know, one for each placeholder. And here I've got x, I'm outputting x again, but I'm also going to output x plus 1 and x plus 2. So we can have an expression here like this that's going to actually evaluate to some value, like you know, 6 and 7 here. And we'll, we'll see that that's fine too. So we can run this here, and we get 5, 6, 7 output. So that's outputting integers, and this is outputting, you know, multiple things via via placeholders, multiple values via placeholders. The other thing I can do is I can output other kinds of values. So I can output like float values and double values and car values as well and strings too. So let's just go over how to do those. I could say here car C is equal to Q and I could say print F and I would use the placeholder percent C. So I could say C colon percent C slash N. Now I'm going to output C and I compile this run this, and we get that C is Q. I can output double values and floats. So I could say here double, and I could say, maybe we'll say Y is equal to 4.56. And I could do print F, and we're going to say here Y colon percent F, and I'm going to output the value of Y here. So we'll, we'll compile this here, run this here, and I get 4.56000 here. So if we really get into printf, it's going to turn out that there's many, many options that we have that can allow us to format what we're outputting. I'm going to go over some of the common ones in this video, but there's basically kind of like a, a dictionary's worth of possible modifiers you can use to modify how you output things. And so I'll actually just provide a link to a, an external source that kind of goes over all those in detail. And I'll just kind of stick to the common ones in this video. So we can also put floats. I can say float, and I could say here z is equal to 2.5. And I could say here printf, z colon, and I'm going to say percent %f again, and then slash n, and then I'll say z. And we'll output this floating point value. So percent %f we can actually use for both floating point values and double values, and it'll work for either of them. You might see people do this. You might see people say, and I do this sometimes too, just out of force of habit. Um, you might see people say percent %lf to output a double. And it's going to actually work just fine. We'll still get like 4.56. It still outputs fine. So percent %lf, this actually gets used with scanf. In scanf, the difference between percent %f 
and percent %LF is actually important. In this case with printf though, it actually doesn't matter. Percent %F, it's gonna work the same for floats and doubles. What actually happens is that a float value like this actually gets treated like a double. They say that it gets promoted to a double. Um, that sounds kind of fancy, but that's what happens is it gets treated like a double anyways with the percent %F. So we can just use that for floats and doubles. So what else do we got? We got strings. So we're gonna say here, we'll say here car and we'll say like string or str is equal to, and we'll say a string to output. Maybe we'll put a new line in the string. And then I can say here print f, and for a string you say percent %s. So we'll say str percent %s. And I'm actually not gonna have a new line there. I'm actually gonna depend on the new line that's in the string itself. And you'll notice that that's actually gonna work. It's actually gonna output the new line as well when we do our printf. So these special characters, they can really be anywhere in our output. They could be inside a string and they're still gonna function the same. So I'll output the string. We'll run this one here. And we get str, a string to output. So we've gone over you know, some of the basic things we might want to output like integers, characters, doubles, floats, and strings. And we've gone over how to output you know, multiple things. The last thing to really go over is all the different formatting options. So when you use a placeholder, there's a ton of different formatting options. And I'm gonna go over kind of some of the basic ones right now, but, and the, the most commonly used ones right now. But like I said, there's just a lot of them. And so far, all we've had is this, is we've had percent and then the specifier. And the specifiers we've had so far have been like D, C, F, and S for, you know, uh, integers, characters, floats, doubles, and strings. But there's other things you can specify. So you can specify some flags, you can specify a width, and you can give a precision with a dot and then some precision. So let's go over how those work. So first off, the width. So if I say here, print F, and I say, well, maybe I'll just say here like, pipe, 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 that's what I call that character. And then we'll say here, percent D, pipe, 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 and I'm gonna output a five here. So what we're probably gonna expect is the number five in the middle of these, these pipe characters here, and that's what we'll get. So we'll say here, run this code here, and we get five in the middle of these characters. So if I were to say though, percent D, and I'm gonna say here 10 in the middle of the percent D, so percent 10 D now, that's gonna be the width value that I'm giving there. So I'm giving a width value here. And what I'm basically doing is I'm defining a width for this field of output. So I run this now and we see that we have 10 characters of space here and five is, def is outputted right aligned in that space. So what this is, is this is defining a width for this thing to be output into. And it's kind of like defining a field width. It's saying that like, I'm gonna output something, it's gonna be an integer in this case, and 10 is the amount of characters that this thing should take up. So it's gonna take up 10 characters worth of space, right? And that's why we get now 10 characters of space, and then five is right aligned within those characters. Another thing I can do is I can provide a flag, and one of the flags I can provide is one as a flag to left align things. So I can left align things. So I can say here percent minus 10D. And now what's gonna happen is it's gonna left align five within this sort of field that we're creating here. So I can run this here now. And now five is left aligned in that 10 characters of space. So another thing we might wanna do is output floating point values and double values. When we output floating point values and double values, we might wanna give a certain amount of precision in terms of the amount of decimal digits to include. So here, you know, we're getting 4.560000. Do we really need all those zeros? That's not really giving us any more information, right? So one, one thing we can do is we can use the, the dot precision to actually specify how many decimal digits of precision to output a floating point value with. So if I say here, print F, and I say, maybe I'll say, I'll do the same thing with the pipe characters just to kind of give it a, a box to sit in. I'll say percent, and I'm gonna say, we'll say maybe eight characters this time. And then I'm gonna say dot, and I'm gonna say two F. And then I'm gonna say pipe, 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 and I'll output, we'll output one of these again. We'll, we'll output say Y. 
So what's going to happen now is I'm saying I want eight characters of space for my output here. And I want to output this value with two decimal digits of precision. So now when I when I run this here, I'll maybe I'll do it clear and I'll just kind of run it up here again. So compile and run it again. I get 4.56 and I get it right aligned within eight characters of space here. And I should have thrown a new line in the end of that there, but but you get the idea here, right? We had eight characters of space and 4.56 is right aligned within those eight characters. And you see that we've only got two decimal digits of precision now. If I were to change this, let's say I change it to three, and I'll just run it again here. Now we get three digits of precision and it's right aligned. This is now on a new line just because I threw in a new line there just to make it look prettier. But we now get the, the three characters of uh, the three decimal digits of precision there. And again, I could left align it too. So I could say like minus 8.3. And what it's going to do now is it's going to left align it there within those eight characters worth of output. And so one thing that these get used for, these, these, these sort of formatting modifiers here, is outputting data into a table. So if you want to output, table, output data into a table, what you could do is you could use these things here, you could use these tools here to actually left align essentially cells and right align what are essentially cells in a table. And you can use these to, to help you output uh, a table's worth of data in that way. And I may post an example video of doing just that actually. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.